The Old Church Bell by Hans Christian Andersen In the country of Württemberg, in Germany, where the acades grow by the punk road, where the apple trees and the pear trees in autumn bend to the earth, a rate of a precious fruit lies the little town of Marva. As is often the case with many of these towns, it is charmingly situated on the banks of the river Neckar, which rushes rapidly by, pacing villages, old knights' castles, and green vineyards, till its water mangled with hosts of a stellar rhine. It was late in the autumn. Vine leaves still hung upon the branches of the wine, but they were already tinged with red and gold. Heavy showers fell on the surrounding country, and a cold autumn wind grew sharp and strong. It was not at all pleasant weather for the poor. The days grew shorter and more gloomy and dark as it was out of doors in the open air. It was still darker within the small, old-fashioned house of a village. The gable end of one of these houses faced the street and with its small narrow windows presented a very mean appearance. The family who dwell in it were also very poor and humble, but who had treasured the fear of God in their innermost hearts and now he was about to send them a child. It was the last hour of her mother's sorrow when there peeled forth of the church tower the sound of festive bells. In that solemn hour, the sweet and joyous chiming filled the hearts of those in the humble dwelling with thankfulness and trust. And when, amidst these joyous sounds, a little son was born to him, the words of prayer and praise arose from the overflowing hearts, and the happiness seemed to ring out on the town and country in the liquid tones of a church bell chime. The little one, with its bright eyes and golden hair, had been welcomed joyously in the dark November day. Its parents kissed it lovingly, and the father wrote these words in the Bible. On the 10th of November, 1759, God sent us a son. On a short time after, when the child had been baptized, the names he had received were added, John Christopher Frederick. And what became of a little lad, the poor boy of the humble town of Marbach? And indeed, there was no one who thought or supposed, not even the old church bell, which had been the first to sound and chim for him, when he would be the first to sing the beautiful song of the bell. The boy grew apace, and the world advanced with him. While he was yet a child, his parents removed from Marbach and went to reside in another town, where their dearest friends remained behind at Marbach, and therefore sometimes the mother and the son would start on a fine day to pay a visit to the little town. The boy was at this time about six years old, and already knew a great many stories out of the Bible and several religious psalms. While seated in the evening on his little cane chair, he had often heard his father read from Gellert's fables and sometimes from Klopstock's grand poem, The Messiah. He and his sister, two years older than himself, had often wept scalding tears over the story of him who suffered death on the cross for us all. On his first visit to Marbach, the town appeared to have changed but very little, and it was not far enough away to be forgotten. The house, with its pointed gable and narrow windows, overhanging walls and stories, protected one beyond another, looked just the same as in former times. But in the churchyard, there were several new graves, the also in the crest, close by the wall, stood the old church bell. It had been taken down from its high position, in consequence of a crack in the metal roof that rendered it from ever chiming again, and the new bell now occupied its place. The mother and son were walking in the churchyard when they discovered an old bell and they stood still to look at it. Then the mother reminded the little boy of what a useful bell this had been for many hundred years. It had chimed for weddings and for christenings. It had told the funerals to give the alarm in case of fire. The very event in the life of man the bell had made its voice heard. His mother also told him how the chimney of an old bell had once filled her heart with joy and confidence, and that in the midst of the sweet tones, a child had been given to her. And the boy gazed at the large old bell with the deepest interest. He bowed his head over it and kissed it, or it thrown away and cracked as it was, and standing there amidst the dress and nettles. The boy never forgot what his mother told him, and the tones of a bell were in his heart. 
till he reached manhood. In such a sweet remembrance was we all felt cherished by the boy, who grew up in poverty to be tall and slender, with a freaky complexion and hair almost red, but his eyes were clear and blue as the deep sea, and what was his career to be? His career was to be good, and his future life inviolable. We find him taking high honors at the military school in the division commanded by the member of a family high in position, and this was an honor. That is to say, good luck. He wore more traitors, stiff corners, and powdered hair, and by this he was recognized, and indeed he might be known by the word of command. Marsh, hard, front. The old church bell had long been quite forgotten and no one imagined it would ever again be sent to the melting furnace to make it as it was before. No one could possibly have foretold this. Equally impossible would it have been to believe where the tones of the old bells still echoed in the heart of a boy from Marba, or whether one day they would ring out loud enough and strong enough to be heard all in love of the world. They had already been heard in the narrow space behind the school wall, even above the defeating sound of Marsh, Alt front. We had shimmed so loudly in the heart of the youngsters when he had sung them to his companies and had stoned, resounded in the very borders of the country. He was not a free scholar in the military school, neither was he provided with clothes or food. But he had his number and his own pack, for everything here was ordered like clockwork, which we all know is of the greatest utility. People get on so much better together when their position and duties understood. It is by pressure that jewel is stamped, the pressure of regularity and discipline, yet jumbled the jewel, which in the future were well so well now. In the chief town of the Provence, a great festival was being celebrated. The light streamed forth from thousands of lamps, and a rocket shot upwards towards the sky, filling the air with showers of coloured fiery sparks. A record of his bright display will live in the memory of man far before when the pupil of a military school was a tears and sorrow. He had dared to attempt to reach foreign territories unnoticed and must therefore give up fatherland, mother, his dearest friends. All was sank down into the stream of common life. The old church bell had still some comfort. It stood in the shade of a church wall in Marbach, once so elevated but quite forgotten. The wind roared around it and could have freely related the story of his origin and of its sweet chimps, and Aaron could also tell of him to whom he had brought fresh air when, in the woods of a neighboring country, he had sunk down, exhausted with fatigue, with no other worldly possession than hope for the future, and a written leaf from Fiesco. The wind could have told that his only protector was an artist who, by reading each leaf to him, made it plain and would have amused himself by playing at nine pins together. The wind could also describe the pale fugitive who, for weeks and months, lay in a wretched little roadside inn where the landlord got drunk and raved, and where the merry makers had it all their own way, and he, the pale fugitive, sank off an idol. For many heavy days and dark nights, the heart must suffer to enable it to endure trial and temptation, yet admits it all what the minister is saying. Dark days and cold nights also passed over the old bell, and it noticed them not. But the bell in the man hearts felt it to be gloomy time. What would become of this young man, and what would become of the old bell? The old bell was, after time, carried away to a greater distance when anyone, even the warden of the bell tower, ever imagined the bell in the breast of a young man was heard in countries where sweet had never wandered. The towns went forth over a wide ocean to every part of the world. We will now follow the career of the old bell. It was, as we have said, carried far away from Marbach and sold as old copper, when sent to Bavaria to be melted down on a furnace. And when, what happened? The royal city of Bavaria, many years after the bell had been removed from the tower and made it down, some metal was acquired for a monument in honor of one of the most celebrated characters which a German poet or a German land could produce. And now we see how wonderful things are ordered. Strange things sometimes happen in this world. 
in Denmark, in one of those green islands, the folk of a banished wood rustles in the wind, and where many hewn graves may be seen, was another poor boy born. He wore wooden shoes, and when his father worked in a shipyard, the boy wrapped up in an old worn out shawl, carried his diner to him every day. This poor child was now the pride of his country. With a sculpture marble, the works of his hand had astonished the world. To him was offered with Anna a forming from the clay, a model of a figure of him whose name, John Christopher Frederick, had been written by his father in the Bible. The bust was cast in bronze, and part of the metal used for this purpose was the old church bell, whose tones had died away from the memory of those at home and elsewhere. The metal grooming the feet, flowed into the wood, and formed the heat and bust of a state, which was unveiled in the square in front of the old castle. The statue represented the living, breathing reality, the form of him who was born in poverty, the boy from Marburg, the pupil of a military school, the fugitive who struggled against poverty and oppression from the outer world. Germany's great and wonderful poet, who sung on Switzerland's delivered William Tell, and of Harris inspired Maid of Orleans. It was a beautiful sunny day. Flags were waving from tower and roof in Royal Stuttgart, and the church bell were ringing in joyous peal. One bell was silent, but it was illuminated by the bright sunshine which streamed from the head and thus of a removed figure of which it formed a part. On this day, just one hundred years had passed since the day on which the chimney of the old church bell at Marbach had filled the mouse's heart with trust and joy, the day on which a child was born in poverty and in a humble home. The same who, in after years, became rich, became the noble woman-hearted poet, a blessing to the world, the glorious, the sublime, the immortal bard, John Christopher Frederick Schiller. We end.